Hey, hey, this is Dan Morris with the Tracing the Path podcast, which is a narrative history podcast. Uh, and today we're going to talk about marketing your podcast uh, when you don't have people that you interview who can send out emails to their lists that they were recently on your podcast. Uh, and a lot of the times when we're researching marketing podcasts, that's the kind of information that I find is how to find the right guests, how to get them to promote you and all that kind of stuff. Well, that's all good, but when you have a narrative podcast, there aren't there aren't those things. There's you can't leverage non guests, so you have to come up with some creative ideas t- to find people interested in what you're saying. Yeah. So that is the crux of what we're discussing today. Um, and I will say that the, what we're about to talk about is uh, appropriate. For all, all podcasts, it doesn't really matter if you're narrative or fiction or nonfiction. It doesn't. It won't matter, and you'll see that as we go through. That um, that won't matter whatsoever. So we're going to go through, I believe, four different tools that I use, uh, and then I'll try to mention a couple of the alternatives. Although everything that I'm going to talk to you about is uh, free up to a certain level, and then we'll even discuss uh, when you would need to go to that particular level. Uh, But the crux of our discussion is who has a vested interest in the episodes that you produce? Like who already already wants to share the episode that you're making without you even knowing? And they're actually looking to share that information. Now, I'd like to point you to uh, any, any time that you've been on Facebook recently, have you seen... Uh, people share or maybe the Jimmy Fallon video. Have you seen that? Now, if you share that, if you shared a Jimmy Fallon video, then you probably did it because uh, it was humorous to you. It was humorous to something inside. It might have been uh, humorous to your tribe, to your people. I know that my wife, Rachel, who runs a motherhood site, uh, has on occasion uh, shared a, a Jimmy Fallon video when he talked about like, Tweets from moms or something like that. You know, how you could see how that would be of interest. So for her, like tweets of moms would be something that she could share with the mother good group. And they would appreciate it. Uh, people would smile. They'd have a good chuckle together. Uh, and it would reflect well on, on her business. So that exists in all forms uh, across the Internet for every single episode that you create. People need and want to share it immediately. Because it will impress, they will improve their stature in their own community. It's something that will make people smile. Uh, all those things. So we're going to talk about how do we figure that out. So the first thing that I do for each episode is after I've recorded it. Now, for you millennial tech people, you probably don't use a notepaper. But I write down on the notepad every single uh, thing that I reference in the in the episode so every city every person occupation product uh era you know if you mention the 1920s the era um try to mention as many things as historical references famous people uh sometimes if you mention clothing like just start to write down everything that that you mentioned in the episode and then you'll see why in a second so, for instance, I'll just turn to a random page. So on one particular episode, I mentioned the Treaty of Paris, Thomas Jefferson, canals in Ohio, the city of Cincinnati, President Rutherford B. Hayes, Dayton, Tennessee. Uh, and just, just name them all. You know, on another one, it might be uh, Juicy Fruit, Pabst Blue Ribbon, Rand McNally, Satchel Page, Comiskey Park, right? Okay. So you're basically taking a subject inventory of your episode. Uh, and it's not as hard as it sounds for, for me with a narrative podcast where I actually write the story. It's easy for me to go back through the story and then just take notes. Uh, but you might might want to hire someone, uh, maybe somebody on Fiverr who could listen and take notes, although you'd have to explain this. Uh, or you just go back and listen and, and just jot down all the things that you mentioned. Now, so that would be that would be step one. Now, step two, um, I use a service called TalkWalker. Now, some people use uh, or used to use Google Alerts, uh, and it still Google Alerts is still out there. Google one at one time said it was no longer a supported service, so I think if something breaks on it, then 
uh, they're just going to make it go away. But, you know, as long as it works, it works. I use Talkwalker because it's free and because I feared that one day Google Alerts would break and then, you know, what would be the point of that? All, all, everything that I had set up would be gone. So uh, the idea of a Talkwalker or, or a Google Alert is we take our list of topics and we start to track whenever those things have been mentioned online, anywhere on the internet. Um, I particularly track, uh, tr particularly track, which give, it gives you an option, but I'm very interested in Reddit, Twitter, and blogs. So when you're filling out the form, like you might put in Comiskey Park, right? It's in Chicago. Uh, you might put in Comiskey Park, and then you might tell Talkwalker, anytime anybody mentions Comiskey Park on Twitter, on Reddit, or on blogs, then I want an email alert. Right? You could say I want it instantly. You could say I want it the same day. You could say I want one a day with all. Doesn't doesn't really matter. You just have to figure out how does this particular strategy fit into your timeline and what you're doing. So you're going to go through your list and you're going to put as many in as you can. Now I think with Talkwalker you're allowed to have 30 alerts at once before you pay for the service. So what I would suggest is that you start with your free 30. Um, and because it takes a little work to get it to work correctly, uh, which is step two. All right, so now that you've got all of your keywords, your key topics into Talkwalker, and you want to know when anyone on the internet mentions Rutherford B. Hayes, the president, um, then you're going to start getting, for you know, for the first few days every day, you're going to get an alert with a list of all the things that have been said about Rutherford B. Hayes in the last day. I'm just going to say this was set on Twitter, this was set on Facebook, etc. So you're going to quickly find out which of your keywords are going to be helpful and which of them aren't. So in one episode, uh, I mentioned Wonder Bread. We talked all about the history of Wonder Bread. But I'm going to tell you, when I put Wonder Bread as a, as a phrase in Togolgar, I, I just get all kinds of crazy stuff. Like, you're as white as Wonder Bread, or uh, my Wonder Bread fell apart. Just stuff that has nothing to do with the history of Wonder Bread, you know, the history of the United States and com companies developing. Uh, so so you quickly learn, you know, like in the first few days, which, which searches are just utterly useless. Uh, and you can delete those, uh, or you can start to apply some Boolean search terms in order to narrow your search. So let me give you an example. Uh, I have an episode called, uh, well, about... Uh, the Oregon Trail computer game and the history of Apple and how it took the, the the Oregon Trail computer game to make Apple famous. You know, without one, there wouldn't be the other, basically. So I thought history of Apple would be great. Well, history of Apple is only great until you realize that lots of people talk about the history of Apple Pie. Uh, and I, I don't really need any tweets to come my direction about the history of Apple Pie. I don't have an episode about Apple Pie. I'm not interested in Apple Pie. So what I had to do is I had to take the word history, history of Apple, and put that into quotes, and then put minus P-I-E, minus pi. Uh, if you know anything about Boolean search, it might be useful for you to learn. That is the language that the search engines use to determine what it is that they're supposed to find. So putting in history of Apple in quotes minus the word pi means Talkwalker is only going to look for articles on the internet that have the word history of Apple together not just the word history and the word of and the word apple on the page, but, but together. And then not the word pie, because that would help me reduce the clutter. So what you're going to do for this second part is you're going to start to hone your keywords to make sure that you're getting the people who are interested, in my case, who are interested in the history of the Apple computer company. Like it would be great if every single day I got a tweet with 10 people who are interested in the history of Apple computers because I actually have an episode about the history of Apple computers. I think you can see where we are headed with this. All right, so step number three is to begin uh, engaging with these folks. Now on Twitter, it's not, it's not difficult at all, or Reddit, because there are these open conversations. Um, I might as well say that on blogs as well. It's, you know, there's a comment section on most, on most blogs. Uh, but on, you know, on Twitter, it's very simple to interject yourself into a conversation if somebody's asking about the history of Apple, and then you can comment on it, and then if you know, maybe even ask a question or join or say that what you liked or what you know about it, and then you know the person replies and says, "Yeah, uh, you know this. We did this episode on the history of Apple, 
link. Uh, and we mentioned it in that episode, and that's why I wanted to bring it to your attention. And I would say 90% of the time, people write, thanks, this is awesome. Can't wait to listen. I'm, inter- I'm interested. Now, the reason that is the case is because uh, I'm giving them something very relevant to the topic that they were just discussing, the thing that they're most interested in. Um, so once you start engaging, then some new things begin to happen. Uh, you start to figure out who are the people talking about these. Not that you even have to like take notes or start to or reference it, but you could start to see who are taking who who are interested in these topics. So I'll give you an example here. Uh, one of our episodes, we, when we're talking about the history of pizza, pizza, I talk about the cholera epidemic in Italy. Now, if it wasn't for the cholera epidemic, then they wouldn't have started to started to fry their dough because they were worried about food illnesses with cholera, and then they wouldn't have created pizza after that because that's they use the fried dough to put their tomato, you know, and uh, basil on top of it. Well, I didn't realize this when I made the episode. But people who are really interested in this type of thing are cholera historians. So now I have gone from recording an episode about the history of pizza uh, to realizing that it's related to cholera to using a history of pizza or I think I even had cholera epidemic in, uh, in one of my keywords and then finding out that there are actual cholera historians. So a couple of times uh, I... I sent the episode over to a cholera historian and told them that they would love it. And on several occasions, people said, you just made my day. This is fantastic. I'm going to share it with my group. So you're getting the idea, right? So now I'm using keywords to figure out who has a vested interest in the episode. So so what you're doing is even though um, the strategy is kind of small, right? We're just talking from one person to the next. If I can find the right people and they can send it out to their group, well, then then we have a, like a more of a shotgun approach, much bigger. It's not as small as it sounds in the beginning. Uh, so for me, this has happened on several occasions. One uh, in an episode about uh, Paul Harvey. Uh, his music teacher is the one that brought Paul Harvey to the radio station where he became a famous, famous radio personality, which means that the music teacher was sort of a hero because if it wasn't for her, then you know, he wouldn't become a famous radio guy. Well, now all of a sudden I realize, okay, music teachers are somebody that I could target on uh, on Twitter, for instance, and one of my keywords, people talking about influential music teachers or I love my music teacher, these kinds of keywords that I want to track, uh, uh, hero and music teacher. So once I start getting into those conversations and I can say, did you know that a music teacher is the one that made Paul Harvey famous? Well, that becomes something that a music teacher wants to share with other music teachers and puts in their newsletter and other kinds of information like that. So again, we start small and then it gets bigger. Uh, and then another thing that happens is uh, in, in the instance of a Curious George episode where uh, the, the authors of Curious George uh, left Paris as Germany was coming in during World War II is the Holocaust Museum started noticing that I was talking about this particular story, which they were aware of. So then the Holocaust Museum put the story into the newsletter, uh, the episode into their newsletter, because it's related to what it is they do. And just like you and I, the person at the Holocaust Museum who's in charge of the newsletter, they need content. So if it's somehow related to the Holocaust, then they have a vested interest in sending out to their community information about my episode. Uh, So... This has happened with the or the Oregon Trail game, uh, with the story of the Spar Spangled Banner, where I mentioned Ripley's Believe It or Not. The people from Ripley's Believe It or Not ended up tweeting me, and then they created a cartoon uh, for Ripley's Believe It or Not that was based on some of the information in one of the episode, and then credited the episode. So that you know, that's again going small and looking for the the big at at the end. Uh, so it does take uh, a little bit of work. It takes a little bit of time. Uh, honing your keywords is probably the hardest part at first, you know, once you're learning the language. Um, and then uh, I would say continue to cut and hone your keywords until you have 30 that are producing uh, like really daily good stuff. You, you might have a good keyword that produces a couple of good things a week, but that's not really that good. You only have 30 spaces before you have to pay for the next level. 
So you might as well jettison the one that's kind of good and then try to find a better keyword so that every day you can be involved in conversations uh, that are have a, that have something specific to do with an episode that you recorded. Uh, and then that will lead you to other people, and hopefully that will lead you to the people that can put your episodes into their newsletters, their magazines, they do YouTube videos about them, uh, anything like that. Your, your whole goal is to find the one person who can send it out to a group that has a vested interest in what it is you're talking about. Uh, in the case of the Holocaust Museum, when they say, hey, you need to listen to this episode, uh, and it talks about this, that's like a trusted source telling a large group of people that your episode would be of interest to them. Uh, so that's what I do as a history narrative podcaster to help get interest and grow the show. Uh, look forward to your thoughts and enjoy being with you. Thank you.